In comic books, shape-shifting enables Beast Boy to take the form of wild animals, and Mystique to take on the appearance of any person she chooses. They're able to will the alteration of their own genetic structure. It's an incredible ability, not something you could ever do in real life. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward and this is Science Friction, where I break down the real science behind comic book and sci-fi superpowers and tell you how to become superhuman. I've asked you to tell me what superpowers you want, and one of the most requested abilities is shape-shifting, the ability to take on the form and appearance of other creatures and people. For thousands of years, humans have been shaping and altering the form and appearance of the species surrounding them by artificial selection. The Romans knew that two black horses were more likely to give birth to a black colt than two white horses. We shaped our own species as well by choosing our partners and spouses. That was the only way we were able to influence genetic structure until 1972. That year, scientists discovered that they could deliver the DNA of one organism into the nucleus of another with the help of plasmids, small packets of DNA found within bacteria. This meant that humans were no longer restricted by the physical barriers of interspecies mating, and two organisms, no matter how different, could share DNA. The next year, the first genetically modified organism was created in the form of an E. coli bacteria that expressed the salmonella gene. Not the most adorable organism, but hey, you know, it's their first one. A few years later, they created a bacteria that could produce insulin which was slightly more useful. In the 80s, we started seeing modified plants like virus-resistant tobacco and tomatoes that can grow in salt water. Today, we even have cabbage with scorpion venom. The purpose of the venom is to be poisonous to the caterpillars that try to eat it. The venom's been modified so that it doesn't affect humans. But maybe don't give your dog the leftovers just to be safe. Scientists didn't stop at plants. We now have cats that glow in the dark like sea anemones and goats that produce spider silk in their milk. This has all been possible through the use of viruses, bacteria, and other biological constructs found within living beings. That's the awesome thing about molecular biology. The machinery has already been built for us. We just need to learn how to use it. Right now, we're playing catch up. We're not nearly as good at writing and rewriting DNA as Mother Nature is, but we're getting better every year, and we're using what we do know to cure genetic diseases. These are disorders caused by faulty DNA coding. We have drugs that are capable of going into someone's cells, finding the bad code, and correcting it, but this process is very difficult and different for every disease. We have to be very careful and very precise, or our tools could end up doing more harm than good. So this is where we are currently. We're getting better at finding and changing single genes. But if we want to alter genes on such a drastic scale as, say, turning a boy into an elephant, we have to do a lot more than just catch up with Mother Nature. We have to surpass her. That's where this guy comes in, the chromalocyte. This is a nanorobot capable of rewriting DNA faster and more efficiently than natural occurring viruses and bacteria. One of these has already been designed by Robert Friedis that's small enough to fit inside a cell's nucleus. It's yet to be fabricated, but that is simply a matter of time. We currently have micro-robots that can move through the bloodstream. Eventually, we'll have nano-robots capable of swimming through our cell's cytoplasm. The ability to replicate another person's features or another creature's form is still far off in the future, but the groundwork has been laid, and advances in molecular biology are becoming more frequent with every passing year. There will come a time when choosing our physical appearance will be as simple as choosing our clothes. Thanks for watching. If this is your first episode of Science Friction, subscribe for future episodes and check out some of the previous ones where I break down how to turn invisible, heal like Wolverine, and reconfigure molecules. And be sure to tell me what superpower you want.